Welcome to the Sunday morning broadcast of Everlasting Gospel Kingdom Ministries. I'm your host, Pastor Apostle Michael E. Snooks, and we praise and thank God for another glorious, magnificent, marvelous day that He has given us again. Uh, the scripture says in the book of the Psalms, uh, I believe it's a Psalm of David, where he says, uh, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. We've got a, 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 a great teaching for you on today. Praise God. That's going to help you in your journey, your Christian journey. It's going to help you in your kingdom walk. It's going to give you uh, uh, pointers and, and keys uh, that you might use to live a victorious and overcoming life in, uh, through Christ Jesus. Uh, we're going to jump straight into that word. Praise God. As we uh, 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 as we have it ready for you, uh, but we're going to uh, go forth into a word of prayer first, and then we're going to jump straight into that word. Uh, so don't go anywhere. Praise God. Uh, we want you to, to uh, remember to subscribe to this channel. Also, uh, like this channel and also comment do comments uh, concerning anything that you might have to say or questions you might need answering to or simply why did we see it in such and such a way. But uh, uh, first of all, as I said, we're going to enter into a word of prayer first and then we'll jump, come right back. And as we come back, we'll jump straight into the word of God for today. So, Father, we bless you and praise you and worship you, magnify you, exalt you, extol you, exclaim you. We bless you. You are the super, stupendous, spectacular, <laughs> magnificent, and awesome God Almighty. And Lord, we just can't uh, uh, praise you enough. The old saints used to say, and we say the same, if we had 10,000 tongues, that wouldn't be enough to give you glory, to give you honor, and to give you praise. So we come this morning just saying, thank you. We celebrate your lordship and our dominion in you. This morning, dear God, we're asking, praise God, as we go forth, give us wisdom uh, as we go forth to be able to uh, communicate your word in a, in, a, in, in a way that you yourself would do it. For you have the ability to bless the people. You have the ability to touch their hearts. You have the ability to help them to understand. You have the ability to learn to overcome that which is uh, bringing them down or causing them to have shortcomings. You have the ability, God. So we lean upon you. We believe upon you, not just to come to have something to do in terms of just teaching, 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 but dear God, for deliverance's sake, destroy, uh, make an irreparable, uh, make uh, our ignorance irreparable. Make, make, I mean, make our ignorance, uh, 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 bring it to the place that our ignorance can't be put back together again. Shatter it for good, God. <laughs> Cause us to see, enlighten us, cause the eyes of our understanding, let the day star, let all of these things rise within us so we may be able to discern good and evil, dear God. Ah, we praise you for the blood of Jesus, the glorified body of Jesus Christ, all of the throne room glory. Bless now, God, and we'll give you the praise. Heal somebody, help somebody, deliver somebody, guide somebody in the magnificent, marvelous, glorious, stupendous name of Jesus. <laughs> we say amen and amen. Well, praise God. I hope you feel good. I keep referring back to my uh, the former saints of uh, that you know uh, where I, that I grew up with, and I sometimes say the oldest saints. Well, I guess I can say that because I'm getting I'm older. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The oldest saints used to say, who wouldn't serve a God like this? And they also used to say, I feel good down in my sanctified soul. I know you, you young guys now, you just jump up and get to running and, and, and uh, that's okay. Amen. I'll kind of tag along. Just look around sometimes and... 
and wait on me. I'll catch up with you in Jesus' name. So, praise God. Here we go. Let's get into the teaching for the day. Uh, I, I, I don't, it doesn't matter, praise God, uh, who you are. This teaching is going to bless you. Why? Because we're taking it from a, 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 a segment of Scripture that we learned from when we were children. The Lord's Prayer. Uh, most of us, as children, when we went to school, uh, went to, to, to Sunday school, then church, uh, um, and uh, we were taught the Lord's Prayer. Two things most of us were taught was the Lord's Prayer and um, the 23rd Psalm. And uh, uh, so most of us know it by, know it by heart. And uh, so uh, the Lord's Prayer over and found, we've uh, taken our, our teaching from Luke, the uh, 11th chapter, and from uh, Matthew's, the 6th chapter. And uh, we've been on it uh, for quite some sessions, and we're going to continue with those sessions till we feel uh, like we've taught everything that we need to teach. I, I, I teach like I study. I, I mean, I would will, I will get a, I will find a, if I'm teaching... Our Father who art in heaven, I'll look up. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't presume that I know uh, what that means. I'll look up every word there, especially when you start talking about uh, how that certain Texas languages were translated from one language into another language, and sometimes meaning gets lost. And not only does meaning get lost, but sometimes uh, 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 there's things that uh, you begin to see more in it than it really is trying to say and whatnot. So, um, but but so it, it takes me. Uh, I remember before I had a computer, which was. <laughs> Maybe almost a century ago. <laughs> well, not quite that far. <laughs> Half a century. <laughs> uh, I remember sitting at my desk during my study time, and I would have, I would have uh, a parallel Bible which has about three versions of uh, uh, of, of, of the Bible, and then I amplified American Standard, King James, and there was one more that was there uh, that I studied from. I also had the strong concordance which was the big uh, thick, thick copy i had the strong skin concordance i had a bible dictionary and i had a bible encyclopedia I had all those on the desk at the same time so when we go to one verse and then you study it and then you look up different things and in, in different places and uh and it was uh it was actually it was awesome uh uh, uh you're left with a clear understanding um, however, again, now with the computer, we have all of those things right in front of us. And just with a click of a finger, praise God, we can enter into this marvelous age of technology. And, and our work workload of research and study becomes so much easier and whatnot. So <laughs> that's not why we're here today. Why we're here today to talk about technologies. So let's, let's get on with this teaching. Uh, uh, we've already been over some of the the, the uh, um, the prayer, our Father, uh, the uh, the prayer in uh, uh, the book of Saint Luke, uh, chapter eleven, where uh, when we get to that place and the, uh, uh, we learn that there was disciples that saw Jesus uh, when he prayed, and they asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray, teach us to pray like we see you pray. Teach us to pray like we see you, like we see John. John teaches his servants to pray. Teach us to pray. And then Jesus says, uh, when you pray, this is how you do it. And that's the, that's how we get this prayer. Jesus um, gives this prayer as a direct uh, uh, a direct uh, answer to a question that one of the disciples asked him. Now, uh, the, the, the disciples were not asking for it, neither did Jesus give them a speech that was to be recited or confessed. That's not what he gave them. And if you think that is just a, a confession or a recital, then you're going to you're not going to get everything that it was meant to give. It was a teaching. Uh, uh, Jesus was teaching them how to pray or how to communicate with God. Jesus was giving them, I like to call it protocols, 
to approaching God. There's a way to approach God that God himself uh, 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 respects. Uh, I, I won't say that, you know, some people say, well, you don't have to use uh, any big words and you don't have to do this and you don't have to do that. And you're, you're absolutely so right. I think God knows our heart. And so God, uh, when we come to God, God knows who we are. But there are some things that uh, when you understand them, that God is, is not so much as more pleased. That's not really the issue. Uh, you come before God as a servant of maturity. Uh, and, and God uh, can put more into the hands of a servant of, uh, um, that is maturing, maturing and that has a desire to mature in spiritual things than he, he, than he will put in the hands of one who is just, um, you know, uh, they're just making confession they have no real understanding of what the word is teaching uh, uh, and, and so that becomes not a stumbling block I, I think that person is still blessed but that person praise God uh, um, uh, uh, is showing that he's not actually moving from faith to faith to faith so uh, uh, Luke chapter 11 verse 1 Jesus is asked teach us to pray and Jesus began to teach him when you pray say our father we taught on these things who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven we taught on all those things last week we talked about the kingdom and we talked talked about um, uh, uh, what is it that Jesus is teaching them uh, when he says, say to the Father, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, you need to look at those things and, and get the contextual thinking of Jesus, because Jesus is saying things like, um, uh, 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 our Father, who are in heaven. Jesus presumes, uh, Jesus understands that we can be on earth and yet we can actually engage with uh, another dimension called heaven. So he says, pray our Father who are in heaven. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a great teaching there about uh, uh, being, um, I, would, I guess I would say tripartite, uh, uh, beings, being able to uh, stand in different dimensions at the same time. And we can simply see that when we see ourselves in the natural dimension, feeling, touching, and then there's a mental dimension where we're thinking. We can think about things, travel places, see things uh, in our minds uh, uh, without ever leaving to go there in our natural dimension natural body so uh, uh, and that's just a picture of of being able to operate on different dimensions simultaneously while we are here in this body we can we can inhabit uh, uh, the natural dimension the, the, the solical or the emotional and intellectual dimension but we can also inhabit or we not inhabit we we, 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 we do inhabit we can also engage the the uh, what we call the celestial, or the, the, some would say it's a spiritual dimension. Now this is this is uh, things that uh, every thing you see on television about witchcraft, ghosts, and goblins, and all those things is this uh, attempt to show us uh, people who are engaging in more than one dimension. They're engaging, yes, in the natural, but a ghost shows up that's, that's not a part of this dimension, but somehow he's trying to scare them, and, and so forth and so on. So, Jesus teaches us. He teach. He was teaching uh, us some things every time he was praying. In other words, we need to understand how to fill in the blanks uh, or, or fill in the parts that 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 that. Uh, what he was, it was every line, every thought, every idea has volumes of information. Our remember, I taught you about our father. 
I told you about Father. Our is is not just Jesus. Saying, when you pray, say uh, the Father of Jesus Christ says. No, he didn't say that. He says, say our. Jesus told us to, to uh, what we need to do is take possession of our heritage, our. Then he says, Father, Father, take possession of our family, our family lineage in God, our Father. There's volumes in there. Who are in heaven? I told you that Jesus shows us the uh, 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 earthly, heavenly collaboration uh, and how that we can communicate with uh, 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 the, the heaven. Uh, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That one's a great one. Make holy the name of God. The name of God is multidimensional. The name of God, uh, 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 it may p appear before us uh, in a certain way, uh, but if you went to a higher dimension, you'd see it in another way. If you went to an in another, you'd see it because God is God all <laughs> anywhere and everywhere. Uh, uh, but uh, but but we see him differently. He manifests himself differently in different dimensions. So he says, "Make holy the name of great." teaching many volumes of understanding Jesus simplified it down to the, the simplest point just make holy the name of God just understand that he's exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think and he can do uh, more than you can even think about you can't even construct uh, in your minds everything that God can do you can't because he's just that great he's just that awesome we are still attempting to uh, 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 understand uh, God, his name, and his love. Praise God. So, so uh, uh, the teaching there, he says, make holy the name. And then he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We taught that the name helps you to understand uh, what God is doing in the kingdom because every time God names himself, he, 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 he it's a, if he says, I'm coming to you and my name is Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, He's coming to you in a specific way, and 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 he explains that to you through his name. He says, "I'm coming to you, and my name is Shalom." He's coming to you in a, spe a specific way. Uh, so that uh, 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 make holy the name, thy kingdom come are linked. And then if you understand, thy kingdom come, thy will, uh, thy, uh, thy kingdom come, or make holy the name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. When you understand all, all of these, you understand that they are linked. And then they lead us to the place that we are today. Uh, give us the, the third verse. Give us this day our daily bread and we'll be going into forgive us our sins for we also uh, as we also forgive those forgive everyone that is indebted to us now uh, as we get to this place, where the, the prayer is shifting a little bit, and you have to catch that shift in there in order to fully understand uh, something that uh, uh, something that's, that, that 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 is happening. That the first part of the prayer is is uh, what I call the conceptual part of the prayer. It's just stuff that you just need to know. It's it's not stuff that that um, you can do anything about. And for instance, when he says, uh, um, he says, our father, see that you just need to know that that is true. You can't, uh, you can make that. I mean, it, it, it's true whether you accept it or not. Uh, but it, it's something that we need to conceptualize that God is our father who art in heaven. Nothing you can do about that. It just is the way it is. Uh, thy kingdom come. Uh, actually, it's going to happen. Remember, in the fullness of time, Jesus was born over 2,000 years ago. It just happened. A virgin shall conceive according to what the prophet wrote, uh, Isaiah, and uh, he will be, his name will be Emmanuel, God with us. It just happened. If you believe it, it <laughs> it's, it's so. If you don't believe it, then, of course, you, you, you know, you, 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 you kind of... <laughs> I said, if you don't believe it, you you're making a mistake. <laughs> okay, I'll leave that at that. So here we go. Uh, 
So the first part of the prayer is a conceptual uh, part of the prayer. We just get to understand thy kingdom come. It's coming whether we like it or not, whether we think so, or uh, you know, ifs and ands and buts about it. Way back, according to the beginning of time, when when we study the scripture, it, it, it the prophetic word goes out and says to the woman, the woman, uh, <laughs> we're going to make this thing right. Man, we're going to make this thing right. And uh, Noah's day, uh, I, I'm doing this now because of a specific reason, but I, I, I'll never, I'm not going to do it like this again. See, God always was going to bring his kingdom uh, uh, to pass. And it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 you can only conceptualize that and uh, put yourselves in his hand and be a part of what he's doing. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, thy, thy kingdom come, thy, make holy his name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Did I, did I go over that part? I think I did. Uh, in other words, the will of God is going to be done in earth as it is in heaven. But here's an interesting, uh, interesting thought. God, I don't know if I did that part or not. But here's an interesting thought that that once you get it, uh, it changes you. You you you're never the same again. When Jesus says, "When Jesus, our Father who art in heaven," you see, we are positioned in the Father. Uh, in, in our day, uh, those who have accepted Jesus Christ, it says we're raised up and we're seated together in heavenly places uh, in Him. We've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. So we are postured uh, if through our faith in our spiritual remember we talked about living sim simultaneously in different dimensions at the same time uh jesus says that whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven why because you have a position in heaven you can come boldly before the throne of grace and god in heaven you are postured as a man or a woman who occupies the regions uh, of the dimensions of the heavens and as a person that occupy when you speak you you speak uh, from a heavenly place, not unless you're so carnal and so uh, carnal minded that every all your thoughts and your, your 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 images and all of your desires and your hopes are just natural. Uh, now, yeah, and, that, and that's a mistake because now there's there's, there's nothing of heaven. Heaven doesn't back it up. See, uh, uh, heaven backs up uh, <laughs> heaven backs up that which God is doing, calling out a people that will believe that God is at work establishing his kingdom, doing things amongst humanity and amongst the, and, and in the earth. So here we go. We have uh, 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 thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. If you bind it in, if you bind it uh, 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 in the earth, you, why you, if you bind it? Why if you bind it? Because you are a member of heaven. You are a citizen of heaven. I mean, <laughs> so heaven binds it. You, 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 <laughs> if you can believe it, I'm not just operating in the natural dimension, uh, 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 trying to bind and loose things. Why? Because uh, the, uh, in my natural, I would be crucified. In my natural, I would be pulverized in my natural. But if I'm speaking from heaven, my position, my posture there, if I'm speaking from that place, uh, it is whether I like it or not. It's a part of my conceptual realization and understanding understanding that, that I've accepted Christ Jesus. I've accepted God for what he's done or is doing in Christ Jesus. So I speak as a man from heaven, connected to the Lord Jesus Christ, who told me that if I overcome, I'd be seated in his throne, even as he's seated in his father's throne. Jesus was the manifest image of the father. We can be the manifest image of the sons and daughters of God or the, or the master who is uh, uh, seated in the heavenly places. We can be his hands, his feet, his, <laughs> his purpose is fulfilled in the earth. Okay, so that will be done, that kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Now, we get to this part called give us this day. And everything else that has been that has been conceptual in the past, just get it in your head. Get an understanding of it. See, it's like the sower who sows seeds. You got to get an understanding. Remember the sower in the first type of ground, St. Matthew's chapter 13? The seed fell on 
wayside ground. Or it was felt on the surface of the road. It didn't get any, it, it didn't go in the ground. It was a superficial hearing and a superficial receiving of the word to the extent that, that, that uh, 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 the, 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 the enemy could come and take that word out of their heart. And Jesus taught, he says, and what does that mean? He, he said, what that means is that that's the kind of a heart that has no understanding has no understanding. So the, the first type of ground or the first type of people or the first things that Jesus is teaching about in, in, these, in, the, in, the, in the first part of this prayer is conceptual things that we need to conceptualize, come to a place of understanding. They don't change. You can be in that place and never uh, manifest a miracle other than your salvation in your life. In other words, you, you, you can be in that place and you might not even speak in tongues. You can be in that place and, you, and, you, and you, you might not, you know, many things you might not do, but but you've conceptualized uh, 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 that he's your father. You've conceptualized, conceptualized that he's at work through Jesus Christ. You uh, conceptualize that he's in heaven and you can pray, you can communicate. You've conceptualized that his will, uh, he wants his will to be done. He doesn't want you us running amok. He doesn't want us running around doing any and everything that our body our feelings, our, our, our eyes tell us to do. You can you can conceptualize all of those things to the extent that you you now have those in you and they're a part of you. But you don't you know. But you, you don't plan. You don't speak in tongues. You don't pray for the sick to be healed. You don't uh, operate in the spirits of prophecy. You don't even believe in apostles. You don't believe in any of that. But yet you believe in God through Jesus Christ. You make holy and see. You see the thing is though is that all those things are potentialities. They are, they are potential for you uh, if you can believe. But the point that I'm making is that the first part of the prayer is a conceptual awareness. Not just an awareness, but the conceptualization of these things. Some people, uh, especially people that, that speak in tongues, we like to criticize people that don't. No, that pr people are into, some people are into conceptual stages. You might say, well, no, they should speak in tongues as soon as uh, uh, well, <laughs> here's my one brother I learned it this way if you get the shoes you, the tongue come with it <laughs> So you get the Holy Ghost, the tongue. So, so, so then, but the Apostle Paul gives us a deeper teaching to do all uh, teaching in tongues, do all prophesy, do all. Uh, yeah, the truth is, the potential is there. Because he asked the question, do all do it? And then he, then he, uh, another place he says, all can do it. So the point is, is this, is that, is that uh, the conceptual is is first and 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 then the second part of this prayer that Jesus will begin to go into is now now here I want to activate some things I want to activate conceptual first get it in you and then the second part he says I'm going to activate some things through you I'm going to activate some things through you. Now, this is that when you start seeing miracles and all of these kinds of things because You've believed for the next part, the activation. The first part uh, uh, just talk, totally depends on God, totally depends on God. The second part, Jesus tells, uh, teaches us to pray and ask, uh, uh, give us this day our daily bread. This, this part uh, uh, says to us that, that uh, uh, Jesus wants us to be to engage in uh, God's working in the earth, not just a knowing that he will work in the earth, not just a knowing that he will work in people. But he says to us now, you have the capability to engage heaven. You have the capability uh, 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 to to engage uh, with God, come boldly before his throne. You have that ability. And he says that, he says, he says, now you're able to draw from heaven. You're able to uh, 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 cause uh, 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 heaven to respond in the earth realm. You, 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 not just conceptually uh, understanding what it is that God says and what God wants, but the next level he'll bring you to, he'll bring you to is 
in an engagement in, in, in to the extent that you can touch heaven and heaven can flow back through you. You can do it. You can uh, uh, initiate it. You can. Here's the key word: activate heaven pouring into the earth. That's where we're about to go now into the prayer. And and I, but you're ne- you're probably never going to see uh, the active dimension where you're actively carrying the sword of the spirit, where you're actively casting out devils, where you're actively seeing the sick. You you're not going to see that until there's a conceptualization of the principle. This is why so many you know, Christians are like to uh, so critical of so uh, uh, so many. Any others, you know, when when uh, the, uh, the tongues were came back to the body of Christ, uh, everybody that spoke in tongues says, "Oh man, y'all y'all ain't got it. Y'all going to hell." When healing was being administered to the body of Christ, uh, I'm talking about uh, a century, two centuries ago, and what? I'm not talking about Pentecost. Uh, I'm, uh, 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 the, the you know part of the church was saying, "Oh y'all ain't got nothing. Y'all do. no no that's not it. It's it's a different. They're at different dimensions." of realization and and um and so it's not that, that it's not that 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 that, that dimension uh, has n- no has no faith. That dimension is not activated because of the place of their faith. But if we when we understand that people can't come to the active dimension where they're doing all of these things, uh, casting out devils, and uh, if you bring a person to casting out devils dimension before you teach them the conceptual dimension, that person is probably going to get possessed by the devil. Or, 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 or obsessed or, or demonized one out one out two. If you bring that person to cash now, devil, you say, "No, I'll put my covering on them." Okay, <laughs> be, I would say, be watchful <laughs> in Jesus' name. All right, so here we go. So he says, he says, give us this day our daily bread. Now, I'm not going to be able to get much into it. I wanted to teach you how that we're moving now from a certain dimension in the prayer into the next dimension. The first dimension was the conceptualization. I conceptualized some things about God that I have no ability to do. I had nothing to do with it. It was around before I got here. It'll be around when I'm when I'm gone. I just have a small part to play in, in, in what, what he himself self is doing and I conceptualize that and now we're coming to an activation stage where the Lord is teaching now listen I want to give you a part in engaging in heaven and causing heaven to flow into the earth. Not just conceptualizing it for your own salvation, your own personal salvation. Not just conceptualizing it for your own personal benefit and gain. But now I'm going to teach you how to activate what you've got and cause heaven to flow into the earth. Okay, so he says the next part of the prayer that he teaches them, and I'm just going to teach you just the, the, the line of the prayer, and then after I teach you the line of the prayer itself, then I'm going to uh, say a few other things, but I'm not going to go into the actual teaching about that particular line. The line itself says, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And first of all, let me just say this uh, for your, for your, you can pray over this until we come back again on Tuesday night. Uh, give us this day our daily bread is talking about more than the need for merely food, eating. It's talking about more than the need for just eating daily bread. Uh, and uh, 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 there's nuggets in here that we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pull out. Um, it's 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 about more than personal food. Uh, what Jesus is speaking about when he says, "Give us this day our daily bread," he's actually talking about uh, the day, the time, and season. Give us in this day what we need. He see, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. See, now you got it inside of you, but you need guidance. You need leadership. You need the Spirit of God to help you to understand where is God going? 
So Jesus teaches them. He says, now, I want you to pray. Uh, give us this day our daily bread. I want you to believe now that heaven can flow into the earth. I want you to believe now, this is not just a conceptual thing. This is a thing that I want you to use your faith for. And I'm not just talking about your daily food. While I am talking about your food, it's a small, it's a part of it. I'm talking about so, so much more. Because if you think it's talking about uh, daily food, then you would, you would, you, you'd have to, um, uh, when you're studying the book of Matthew, you'd have to question Jesus. You're saying, Jesus, you're talking out of both ends of your mouth. Because Jesus teaches them in, in the sixth chapter of Matthew, a little later, he says, take no thought for what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, you know, those things. But, uh, 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 but at the same time, in teaching the prayer, he says, pray, uh, give us this day our daily bread. So one place he says, don't think about it. And one place he says, think about it. Is, could that be? No, that's not what it is. When he says, give us this day our daily bread, he's talking about so much more than our, our daily food. Remember back in um, um, the Old Testament when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt and there was no food and, and God calls manna, that, that angel food, uh, uh, heaven to rain down a type of food to, that sustained them in the wilderness. Well, they were on their way. They were journeying uh, out of captivity and journeying into the promised land. And God began to supply uh, the need for uh, the need of, of, of manna. But one thing about the manna, was that you had to eat all of that manna in the very day that it came. You couldn't save any of it until tomorrow because if you tried to save it until tomorrow, it rotten. It rotten on you. So you had to have a daily supply of the manna. We too need a daily supply of the leadership of God a daily supply of the guidance of God. Now, everybody's not called to be the band leader, to go out in front of everybody and says, okay, I see where we're going. Come on, let's go. No, everybody's not called to that. Some of us, some are called. God says, I've given apostles, prophets, pastors, teaching, and advancing for the edifying of the saints, uh, for the perfecting of, of the saints, the, the, for the movement from one uh uh, destination to the next destination in the things of God, the announcing, the blowing the shofar of the horn of God to the body of Christ is done by uh, a God, the Holy Spirit, uh, through servants of God. So here we go again. Um, uh, uh, it's not this next portion. Uh, we're moving from the conceptual. Now we're actually moving into uh, an activation of faith. Let me pray with you. Praise God uh, uh, and that God would uh, 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 honor you and honor the word of God. I praise you, God Almighty, in Jesus' name for what you're doing, what you've begun. I bless you and I, and I, and I, I give you honor. I give you glory in Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for daily bread, God. I thank you for, for blessing us and helping us. I thank you for guiding, God. I thank you for uh, you guiding uh, somebody uh, from dimension to dimension. And as you're guiding them from dimension to dimension, you're causing healing, deliverance, and all those things that they stand in need of to take, to take place in their life. I speak as a man from heaven. Uh, I speak as a man occupying the spaces of heaven, speaking into the natural realms, who, who cannot con who, who, can who cannot contain the glory, the, the the weightiness of the heavens. Praise God! Nor the atmospheres of the earth can stop or prevail against it. So therefore, I speak deliverance, healing, blessing, wholeness in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless your people, God. We'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. 
Amen. All right. Praise God. I hope you were blessed out of the teaching. I was blessed bringing it to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, don't forget that we're on every Sunday morning, Lord willing, at 9 a.m. And uh, 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 also on every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. So Tuesday nights, we come on in the name of uh, Keys to the Kingdom Ministries. And then on Monday evenings, uh, Pastor Elaine Brown uh, comes on in the name of... Uh, uh, the prayer altar uh, of Everlasting Gospel Kingdom Ministries. And as she comes on, she leads us uh, in prayer and the word a word for the day or the word for the week, however God leads her. And then uh, 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 we get a chance to put out, bring our prayer requests and, and, and thank God God has been with us. God has been helping us. God has been on our side. And we praise God for it. We've got other affiliates also uh, you can tune in to if you need to, some information. Every night during the week, not, I don't think on Friday nights we have anybody, but Monday Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, we know that we have, <coughs> excuse me, someone that can, uh, uh, that is teaching uh, or, 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 or having created an altar that if you've got a situation, circumstance going on in your life, you can get uh, um, somebody to lock arms with you and to pray about those situations. And please, let us pray with you. God is, uh, God is blessing uh, and helping us, and we don't want to keep it to ourselves. We want to pass it on to others. We, uh, again, have, uh, uh, really, we have been blessed myself by teaching this teaching. I hope that you've been blessed by receiving it. Uh, with that, we'll say shalom. Uh, be blessed. We'll see you next time, the Lord willing. Uh, and remember, you are the blessed and not the curse. You're the head. You will never be the tail. Shalom. We'll see you next time in Jesus' name. God bless.